when Luke told me, you either accept this or I will kill myself, um, I knew he was serious. He would stare at the wall for hours on end sometimes just, just because he was that depressed. It was almost like he just gave up on life already at seven years old. He played with um, Mrs. Potato Head, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head all the time. And his thing was he'd run around the house and always had Miss Potato, Mrs. Potato Head earrings on and he always had her lips in his mouth. <laughs> he loved to, you know, go and play around. He loved just life, you know. He, he loved just being out and about and seeing the beautiful sights of the world. But as he grew older, it, it changed. Uh, it wasn't until about the age of seven when I started seeing the darkness and that's when uh, Luke became very drawn and quit talking and just started shutting down. He didn't want people seeing his arms or his legs or um, any part of him. He got in school and saw that he felt different. Then he started being singled out. He started seeing that the things were being singled out as male and female and it started confusing him. So at that point I thought, uh-oh, I better start kind of preparing dad because I think Luke's probably going to be gay. And um, I just kind of started looking at it that way. Luke's dad uh, didn't accept him at all. He was an alcoholic at the time. And uh, his wife, Jaslyn, their, uh, their relationship failed because of his alcoholism. So he was already in a depressive state with that. And, and then when I turned around and I hit him hard with, oh, guess what? Your child's not gay. He's transgender. And um, it, what took him 10 years to accept uh, as a gay child, he now had to start all over again with a transgender and not knowing what a transgender was, he had, he had no clue what it was. When he comes to find out that his son actually wants to be a girl, you know, he, he lost it. And he wanted, of course, a big, you know, football loving son for his first son. And he didn't get that. But Luke went on, and he started hormone therapy. He changed his wardrobe, and then uh, he decided that he wanted to change his name to Katie, and that's who I am today. The hardest part for Randy was that he felt like Luke just totally disappeared off the face of the earth, and it broke his heart. There was no memorial, there was no service, there was no funeral, there, there was nothing. Luke just totally just disappeared. And Dad and I were like this when I was a kid. You know, when I was first born and I was a happy baby, he would come home and tell me stories. And uh, he was in the Marines, so he would come in in his uniform and I'd play with his hat. I just try to tell Randy, um, it's not that Katie took Luke from us, it's just that we had it wrong from the beginning. We never had a Luke to begin with. Now, so, <laughs> Jake took it the hardest. And I think the reason why Jake took it so hard is because um, he's a little brother. And, you know, he had to turn around and would all the time tell everybody, well, my brother this, my brother that. And now all of a sudden he's having to go, everybody's telling him, no, you have to save my sister now. He would say, no, she's got to be a boy. She's got to be a boy because I don't want to freak for a sister or something like that. He wanted to be like me. And I think it just scared him to know that now that we still went to the same school, he, he, try to follow in my footsteps now, and he couldn't. He was scared to. The most difficult about the whole thing was just with her being in high school. Parents did actually go to the school and pull their kids out of the same class that they were in with Katie because they thought Katie was going to turn their kids transgender by being in the same classroom with them. I really thought it was going to get really bad. I'm surprised our house wasn't toilet papered every day and stuff written on the the house and the garage, um, but it didn't. It, it just, it didn't happen, and I count my blessings every day for that. In the end, uh, here I am in my senior year, about to be the first openly transgendered person to graduate from a high, Oklahoma high school, and people don't bother me anymore.
I can't believe that's, you know, my girl that's being graduated as a first openly transgender in Oklahoma. That's pretty historical and pretty moving. I came to the gala and I just saw her and you know, absolutely beautiful as always. That's the night that I actually asked her out. Quality Gala is basically like a big gay event, if you want to say, for a bunch of awards for people that have done good for our community. Dad pretty much came around when he saw me at Gala and he saw me dancing and I was smiling and I was, you know, happy and in a dress and I was, you know, beautiful that night. I clicked with him that I'm not the same person. She's one of my heroes and I want to send this one out to Katie Rain Hill, who I love. Six-hour surgery, two-week recovery period. Uh, even the, the pain to the point where morphine doesn't cover the pain. It's gonna kind of suck, but it's gonna rock at the same time. I missed her for two weeks, so I mean, two weeks she was gone, I was just, you know, missing her like crazy, so it was amazing to be able to finally see her, you know, completely female as she always imagined herself. Yeah, it's amazing what nine days did you. I think my entire life I've really known that I've been male inside, but I really knew, didn't know how to express it. I first came out as, you know, a very masculine lesbian and then I realize you know when I'm relating to a female I relate to them as male you know you grow up knowing that you know you might not be able to have a you know relationship with somebody because of the way you are and then I meet Katie and we're like the exact opposite you know I'm FTM she's MTF so I mean it just kind of fits together like a puzzle piece I didn't want another man looking at me as a man. I wanted somebody when they kissed me, they weren't kissing a man. They saw me as beautiful, not handsome. They saw me as someone who was soft and gorgeous, not strong and you know masculine. It just didn't appeal to me. The more you try to fight it and, um, you know, say, no, 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 this is not normal, this is not normal, the worse it's going to be. But I have a picture in my room that shows me when I was a baby, and if you saw that picture, you would see big lips and puffy cheeks and these big blue eyes, and you wouldn't think that was a little boy. 